Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Now this is very interesting. Boy, if there ever was a dichotomy of what's going on, exactly, exactly. it's right here because right. here we are right downtown right by the freeway, right in the heart of Los Angeles. Right in the heart of downtown. In a vacant lot. Vacant lot, right. I'm standing here with Christopher and Dolores. Nierges. Nierges. Right. Nierges yeah. is what? It's Hungarian. My father is Hungarian. Oh, ah, yeah. OK. But uh, your wife is part Lakota, Indian. right. Lakota. Uh, yes. And Cherokee. And Cherokee. Right. Right. And what she is, what the two of you all do is very, very interesting because you teach classes at various colleges and universities in Southern California. You give kind of group tours, school tours Correct. around right. the Los Angeles area. And it's called the School of Self-Reliance. Self and what right. is that all about, Chris? Well, you know, in essence, we're teaching people what we've forgotten. We're teaching people the old skills when people er everywhere lived off of the land. They grew their own food. They made their own things. They made their shoes, their clothes. And look how far we've come from that today. You know, we came here not only because it's in the heart of downtown, but this is close to where the Yangna Indian Village was some 500 or more years ago. Uh, we're, we're just south of the freeway. The L.A. River is right over here. So people would have lived here. It wouldn't have looked like this, obviously. There would have been willow trees, alder trees. The rush hour in the morning would have been a dozen or so guys going over to the river, right, to wash up and to maybe hunt uh, quail or deer. Um, what? I said get some rabbits. <laughs> rabbit stew. Well, we're not here for rabbit stew. What we're here for, and this is so interesting, is that Christopher is going to take us around downtown Los Angeles and we're going to find things in very unlikely places that can actually feed us, right. that now, we can actually eat. That's right, we're gonna make a salad and I know you're fond of these things so I'm gonna let you taste some later in the day. But it shows that nature wants to survive, right? If we don't pave everything over, we would have food everywhere. Yeah. There, you know, I saw a homeless guy walk by Maybe he eats out of trash cans. I mean, look at this lot. Nobody eats out of it. The fact is the food here is far superior to whatever he's eating out of a trash can. So right here, right here, right here yeah. there is food. Now, before we go looking for the food, you were doing what? I was doing a little drumming, which sets a kung for the activity that we're going to do here. And I do a little pulse walking as a Native American step that you do with the drumbeat. Now, why are we doing that now before we go looking for the food? Well, there's a common attitude toward nature that it's here for us to push around, and that's actually not the attitude that you should take. We have a lot to learn from the Native Americans with regard to the attitude toward nature, being harmonious with nature and being respectful. So we come setting a, a harmonious beat, not stomping in you know we're here to rip you up and take you and eat you and then leave you behind but re approach respectfully and approach each plant we even tell the plant we're going to pick a little of you and thank you yeah and, uh, so you said a kung you may even say a few respectful words like uh, everywhere a lesson everything real aid acknowledging that nature is a value not to serve nature not to dominate nature, but to be in harmony with. Boy, and what a strange place to do something like this. I mean, we are right in the middle of an industrial area. The cars are whizzing by here, and this is an ugly